pretty mixed picture, as you said. On the one hand, uh, nominal pay growth, total pay, including bonuses, has been exceptionally high this month. It's nearly 10% when you include bonuses, nominal pay growth, which is the highest figure we've had in 20 years, in at least 20 years. That was for the single month of March compared with March of last year. But underlying that, regular pay, when you take out bonuses, is running at more like 4%, which is still good by historic standards, but it's not huge. And with inflation being so high, that means for people who are getting bonuses, then their pay is staying just above inflation. For those that aren't, pay is starting to fall behind. It's worth saying, though, these bonus payments now look like they're happening really across. I mean, it's particularly driven by finance. It always is. But it's happening across private sector industries. There's a real public-private split here. So I think in part what's happening is private firms are having to pay more because of the recruitment crisis and the job squeeze. Um, but they're not prepared yet to put it into people's um, like underlying pay. They're putting it into bonuses instead, which I think points to the fragility of the recovery at the moment and the fragility of hiring at the moment. Everyone is worried about what's going to happen later in this year, particularly with interest rates and inflation both rising. Luke Hilgard of the High Pay Centre, what do you make of these new numbers? I mean, Tony Wilson's right, of course. Uh, if you include bonuses, there is some growth in real wages, but lots of people don't get bonuses. Those bonuses tend to be focused very much on the finance sector, though that is getting broader. And of course, the higher wages that we see in finance skew these average numbers that we're talking about. Yeah, completely. Um, I think the uh, the proportion of bonuses that goes to people in the finance, the proportion of total bonuses is something like 60%. So it really is uh, benefiting primarily the, uh, the high earners in, in finance still. Even though, as Tony says, uh, it, bonus payments to, to workers across the economy, uh, industries like construction, manufacturing, are becoming more commonplace. I think the figures, uh, the aggregate and average figures, also mask some wildly different stories. The um, uh, looking at the, the the government figures on uh, earnings and employment from pay as you earn real time inf information, um, the the poorest uh, ten percent incomes are up less than one percent. For the richest one percent, they're up uh, eleven percent. So again, it's t it, it, it's saying that same thing, but the the averages are, you know, there are some good things, some bad things uh, to see in them, but the. Um, the rich are generally doing very well, the poor not so well. And the UK is already uh, one of the most um, unequal countries in in Europe in terms of income inequality. And, and, and it looks like those divides at the moment are only getting wider and more painful. Interesting, Luke, you say the poorest 10 percent, their incomes went up just 1 percent, well below inflation. And the richest 1 percent, their incomes went up 10 percent. And of course, we, we can talk about income inequality, but the even bigger inequality is of wealth, of course. Income inequality is just one part of overall inequality. Victoria, let's turn to you. As real wages continue to be squeezed, my great fear, not just in terms of the human suffering and stress paying your bills, certainly at the lower end of the income spectrum, and even going into you know, people who were previously quite comfortably off, a bigger concern I have is that as purchasing power is squeezed, retail spending falls, the entire economy slows down and becomes sluggish. And we're already seeing that, aren't we, in the overall GDP growth numbers? Yeah, we are. We had those GDP figures out last week, which saw a surprise contraction mm. in March, which could potentially pave the way for a recession by the end of the third quarter. So clearly there's a lot of data points we need to look at, whether that's uh, wages, consumer confidence, business confidence, retail sales. All of these can be a precursor and give us some clues as to where the economy is going next. But given all of the inflationary pressures, given the backdrop of the geopolitical uncertainty, and just given the fact that we are coming out of COVID uh, with a very unbalanced budget from the government, it does look as though we are setting the stage for a slowdown. And that's why the Bank of England itself has forecast a recession. Mm.